Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. So, what I'm about to tell you is some masked magician sort of stuff. Like, after I say this, you won't ever want to watch another video of mine again, or at least the country name videos anyway. You sure you want to carry on? Okay, well, here it goes. Every country is pretty much the same etymology. Well, sort of. Most countries are named in one of a few ways. If you've been watching my videos for some time now, you'll probably already have a good idea of this. From my time talking about nation names and from the work of others, it seems we have to put most country etymologies into five categories of origin. Most countries are either named after a tribe or ethnic group who live there. In example, France is named after the Franks, Russia is named after the Lus, and Turkey is named after the Turks. This is pretty damn popular, especially in Europe. Another Another usual naming convention of a nation is that they're named after just one specific person. Take the name America that comes to the name of the Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci, or Simon Bolivar, the political figure whose role in South America was so important, the nation of Bolivia was named after him. And of course we have the Philippines, named after King Philip II of Spain. When not being named after either one person or lots of people, the lay of the land usually plays a role in the naming of a nation, such as the many nations named after rivers like Jordan, Paraguay, Moldova and Niger, just to name a few. And the Montenegro meaning Black Mountain, as on the mountains the nation looks rather black. There's also the countries named in reference to their location, like Australia meaning the Southland, Norway meaning the Northway, and South Africa, as it's in the South of Africa. And finally there's countries named after other parts of the world, like New Zealand being named after part of the Netherlands, and Venezuela being named after the Italian city of Venice. One of these five explanations covers pretty much every nation on our planet, but it doesn't always have to be the case. There are some nations with truly unique name origins. Take Pakistan, a name which is an acronym of the regions that make up the nation, or how Iceland was a name that was meant to deter people from visiting due to the cold connotation of the name. And of course we have Malta, believed to be named after their uniquely delicious honey that's produced in the land. There's really interesting unique nation etymologies out there, you've just got to find them. And the nation I'm talking about today may just have the most unique story Story I've come across for a country yet, and I'm of course talking about the nation of Senegal. Senegal resides in West Africa. In fact, it's as west as you can go on the continent, as it shares its westernmost border with the Atlantic Ocean. It has an estimated population of around 60 million people, and the nation itself is just under 200,000 square kilometers in size. While the official language is French due to their history in the land, the native language of Wolof is actually their lingua franca. The nation is also into a huge variety of wildlife, seven UNESCO heritage sites, the tallest statue in Africa, a pink lake, and on Sundays, shepherds take their sheep to the beaches to get them clean to have fun. The national sport of Senegal is wrestling, though I don't think it's the spandex mask and storyline kind of wrestling unfortunately. The first thing I'm sure a lot of people notice about the nation is the shape of it. Along its western border, the nation seems to develop something of a mouth, making the whole nation look a little bit like Pac-Man. This indent in Senegal makes up the nation over the Gambia. The Gambia's borders are made up pretty much exclusively by the Gambia River that runs through it, hence the unique shape. Why the Gambia is its own nation and not just part of Senegal, however, we've covered in a previous video, so feel free to check that out. Anyway, this video isn't about the Gambia or its name. How did the name Senegal come about? Well, like I implied it has a pretty unique story. Well, kind of. It is unique, but it also fits into one of those five categories we kicked off this video with, as the name Senegal comes from a geographic feature. The name of Senegal comes from the Senegal River, but how that river got its name is the interesting unique part in all this. This name of the river, and in turn the name of the nation itself, is believed to mean our boat, and more specific to the kind the boat is canoe, so the name is often defined as meaning either our boat slash our canoe. Like I said, this is pretty darn unique. Not just because the name means canoe, but specifically means our canoe. This must be the only nation whose name derives partially from a possessive determiner. How can you not think that's fascinating? Though how on earth did this nation end up being named after a boat belonging to multiple people? Well, this origin comes from something else we hear about happening pretty often across the world during our history. That is of course European interference. Many European nations had roles in this land. As mentioned, French is their official language to this day, and the nation only gained full independence from France in 1960. However, while France played the biggest role in the nation, the Dutch and British over the years seized land in the nation too. Its location on the west of Africa made it highly desirable, as not only was it close to get to and from Europe, but was the point in Africa that was closest to the New World, specifically Gori Island which belongs to Senegal. This became a vital island for the slave trade, a north part of human history that the British, French and Dutch all played a role in. It's always worth remembering that while these awful things happened in the past and may feel like they no longer affect us, they so heavily shaped our modern world. 
It wasn't just the French, British and Dutch empires who claimed land in Senegal and used it for the slave trade. There was a fourth European power too, the Portuguese, and it was the Portuguese who actually were the first Europeans to reach this land. While it wasn't the biggest of empires, the Portuguese empire was actually the first to get started out of all the great European empires, and lasted longer than the rest, officially started in 1415 and only ceased to be in 1999, first to arrive and last to leave for sure. Of course, the most pivotal part of their empire was the colonization of Brazil, which one of the largest nations to this day and still speak Portuguese. The Portuguese wanted to land across the world, primarily for two reasons, to trade and to spread Catholicism. Their conquest of Africa saw them inhabit Cape Verde and set up trading posts in the mouth of the Senegal River. The Portuguese settlement of Africa took place in the 1440s, so somewhat early on in the empire's history. While the land would eventually come into the possession of the French, it was the Portuguese who got the ball rolling on the name Senegal and how it got named after the canoes. While the Portuguese settled there in the 1440s, it wouldn't be until 1850 that the canoe etymology theory would be put forward. This idea was derived by French author and priest David Bollat. As I mentioned, while French is the official language, the native Wolof tongue is the lingua franca of the land. This language was there before Europeans rocked up, didn't get ousted while the nation was under the control of various nations, and is still strong to this day. Which is pretty impressive considering the fates other languages met across the globe when Europeans settled there. And it's from the Portuguese misunderstanding of a Wolof phrase where David Boilat suggested the name Senegal may come from. Boilat suggested that Senegal was a Portuguese slash European in general corruption of the Wolof phrase Sunogal, which means our pilog. A pilog is a kind of boat made from a single hollowed out log. And of course, a canoe is a type of pilog. So as well as the name translating to either mean our canoe slash our boat, its more specific title could be seen as our pilog. I guess canoe and boat are heard of more often though, as they are much more commonplace names and more well known than the specific name of Pilog. Boilat even discussed the possible scenario which led to this phrase becoming the name of the river and land. Imagine a Portuguese trader sailing up the river, eventually coming across a group of natives in their Pilog. The Portuguese trader coming to the conclusion that their locals may have asked them what this place is called, and as the locals wouldn't have had a grasp on the Portuguese language, they presume the traders asking what they are sailing on, to which they respond Sunogal, meaning our Pilog. The Portuguese trader presumed that the natives were telling him the name of the river, so he presumed that Sunogal was the name for the river, leading it to be corrupted into Senegal, with that name being applied to the river and eventually the land that surrounds it. It's kind of a far-fetched idea, but there is some logic to it. Sunul Gao sounds a lot like Senegal, and the situation presented by Bolat isn't too far out the realm of possibility. Besides, it wouldn't be the first place to have a name deriving from a mistake. Both Madagascar and Rio de Janeiro's names are mistake listed too, as we've discussed in older videos. However, there is a key reason as to why this etymological idea has gained so much traction and has somewhat become the definitive answer to how the nation got its name. And that's because of the image and sense this name gives off. Knowing that your nation's name translates into meaning our boat really evokes a sense of camaraderie. The idiom of we're all in the same boat is used by many people and it means we're all in the same situation, but we're in it together. To the Senegalese, Senegal is their boat. It belongs to all of them. Whatever situation may arise, everyone in the nation is facing it together. It might might sound a little corny, but honestly, I think it's a really charming idea, and having your nation's name double as a message of hope and solidarity is really cool. I understand why this etymology has stuck around. Though as cool as this etymology is, it is just one theory as to how the name came to be. There are other ideas. Explorer Alaviz Cadamosto was hired by the Portuguese to explore Africa. He is credited with being the first European to see the Cape Verde Islands, and he also explored mainland Africa too. What we also know about him is that he was referring to the river in Africa as Seniga in the 1460s, which is very close to when Boilet's idea was thought to originate from. It could be seen that the name Seniga was already applied to it, and this name is thought to possibly come from from a group of people native to the north of the river, the Zeniga people. It's pretty clear to see how Zeniga may have become Zeniga, and from that became Senegal. Wikipedia even floats the theory that comes from the local Silo religion, and their top deity called Olog Sin, plus the term Olgal, meaning body of water. Perhaps the Senegal river is a holy place in this religion, and you can see how Rog Senegal could have become Senegal. And while these theories of the nation being named after a tribal people or a god may have a bit more weight to them, they haven't caught on like the Arcanu etymology has, which is completely fine with me. Even though this etymology doesn't fit into the five ideas of nation name origins we laid out at the start of this video, the art boat etymology is way more fun and unique. 
Well, that's what I think anyway. Perhaps you're not in the same boat. Senegal was suggested by Ekmal Sakano, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains patron saint of Senegal. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a Name Explain video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just at $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a Name Explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain, so donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos, and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can follow me on Twitter where I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.